Well, welcome back, everybody. Um, we're now going to turn uh, our focus to um, looking at higher education and some of the um, challenges and events that are taking place within the university system and college system, both in terms of teaching and also research, but with a predominantly focus on, on education. Uh, we've got five speakers, including myself, and uh, I'll, I'll uh, just share this for a for the 30 minutes that we're on, and um, I hate to say I'm running a Mac here and the system's been a bit problematic, so um, thank you for the panel for allowing me to go first and get this out the way and then we'll get the technology back to, uh, to running in normal style. So what I'll talk about is the, is the program here at Geology and Geography at WVU. Uh, we're blessed to have five faculty who specialise in geographic information science. Um, Dr. Warner is our remote sensor, Dr. McNeil is our environmental GIS person, and Greg Elms, myself, and Jameson of the GIS and spatial modelling and data analysis side. Uh, we run the gamut of degrees from the BA all the way up to the PhD, so we're currently within the research mode. But we also offer, particularly for undergraduate, a certificate in GIS, which represents an achievement of uh, attaining five courses in, in GIS that are um, then recognized for the certificate, which is um, uh, useful, very useful when it comes down to um, uh, job applications and, and resume building. We offer, because there's five of us, a range of classes, as you can see at the undergraduate level, all the way from the introduction to digital earth, all the way up through GIS design applications, remote sensing, digital cartography, and a number of GIS and applications type classes, such as um, Greg's work on time mapping. So we, we have um, pretty much through the year, each one of these classes will run, and in some instances will run twice, such as 350 uh, in previous years. We also run a number of graduate level classes. Um, we have a, a large graduate level body and you can see that the numbers as a result of that are smaller, but the range of topics are, are, are broader. And that's something that we, we find ourselves facing here, is that increasingly the focus is not just on the GIS, it's on geographic information science, and the whole range of geospatial technologies that we can bring to bear for that. So what I'm going to do quickly is go through a template of questions that we set ourselves, uh, to answer in, in our five minutes for each each um, institution. So there are a number of related uh, groups who work with us, um, the research group for energy, for the ecosystem, for the tech center, obviously, um, rich work in West Virginia View. Uh, we see a number of trends occurring. Um, we're seeing an increasing number of students entering our GIS classes. Um, a number of them now stringing them together, so we have a sequence of courses where we can take them from the introductory through to the more advanced levels and it's nice that we can build a curriculum that has meaning and semblance to them. They're coming to the GIS much earlier rather than in their final years as, as undergraduates certainly and therefore they can take these classes with them and the skill sets and begin to apply them in other areas and other disciplines that are of interest to them. Um, obviously a lot of um, majors taking the, the GIS, but we're also getting increasing interest in, in the minors as well. So that means you do five, three credit courses to essentially obtain a minor, and we have one in the GI science. And what we're seeing, of course, is, is a broadening of the geospatial technologies beyond the sort of art of GIS level and into the geospatial web, into other areas of geovisualization and so forth coming through. Employment trends, as, as many of you know, the last few years has been really tight. We, um, we were doing very well with placements up to about 2008, and then the economy took the downturn, downturn and I think we've all seen this. So employees are still in uh, uh, hiring, um, uh, but they're being much more selective, and they're looking for experience. And the experience is in terms of projects, and um, particularly in terms of internships, something that I'll return to right at the very end of this. Accomplishments, again, growing numbers of students, growing number of courses, and a lot of our students moving on to research degrees. Uh, some of which are in-house, many of them move to, to other locations. We might be seeing this as partly a, a response to the downturn in the, in the marketplace and the job prospects, 
but uh, a lot of people going on to do research in, in the GI science. Um, a number of challenges that we, we are coming up with, um, how do we manage this broad mix of skill sets of, from the students and their understanding of backgrounds. Um, the sequencing of courses helps this, but as we begin to look for foundational courses that students could have taken before they move on, then you're into the realms of prerequisites. And that causes a lot of problems because people don't want to take course one and two in order to do course three. And yet course three, in a sense, requires those requisite skill sets. So we struggle with someone and how to deal with that. The technology, as we all know, is evolving so rapidly, it's really difficult to keep up with that. Uh, particularly in terms of a teaching structure so that we can maintain that through our coursework. Um, lots of work going on in addition to the GIS with the online map and the geospatial web and so forth that we're aware of. And one thing we struggle with all the time is the tension between teaching the, the, the geographical understanding, the GIS principles and so forth, and yet the student desire oftentimes just to get the hands on, press the buttons, make a map and move on. Um, Obviously, being a good practitioner in GIS means you understand what's, what's happening with issues of scale and data as you're processing through, not merely the ability to make a map. Uh, in what ways can the community contribute to this? Uh, and I see very much a role here in terms of internships. Uh, internships are incredibly valuable to our students. They're always on the lookout. Uh, Greg Elms at the front here would, is our coordinator for that. Uh, we're looking for opportunities all the time, not necessarily even paid opportunities, although that's uh, obviously welcomed by the student body, but unpaid as well, to get that practical experience to be able to build the resume and to understand what a work environment looks like in the GIS world, particularly value. So let me stop there and I'll hand on to the, the next speaker then while I disconnect this series. So Tom, I think you're up next.